so uh, dear students uh, welcome to welcome back to our uh, discussion on refrigeration and air conditioning so in the last class we uh, stopped with uh, uh, the analysis of uh, uh, an, a simple type of aircraft refrigeration system now let us try to do a small problem on that so here let us uh, do a simple problem so let me read the question an aircraft which is moving at a thousand kilometer per hour it uses simple type of air refrigeration cycle for air conditioning okay so uh, this uh, air refrigeration system is used for air conditioning inside the aircraft the ambient pressure comma temperature are 0.35 bar and minus 10 degrees celsius so what does that mean the ambient pressure the atmospheric air pressure and temperature are 0.35 bar and minus 10 degree celsius respectively then the pressure ratio of the compressor is 4.5 okay so what is meant by this uh, pressure ratio the pressure ratio of the compressor means so we know the function of the role of a compressor is to uh, increase the pressure of the working fluid okay so the pressure ratio means so the compressor will be providing an output of 4.5 times the pressure uh, that is or it, it will be increasing the pressure of the working fluid by 4.5 times that is the meaning of this line then again we are continuing reading the question heat exchanger effectiveness is 0.95 so let, uh, let us come back uh, to this sentence later so we are moving on uh, now the isentropic efficiencies of the compressor and the expander are 0 0.8 each okay again we are continuing reading the cabin pressure and the temperature are 1.06 bar and 25 degree celsius the cabin pressure and the temperature are 1.06 bar and 25 degree celsius what does that mean the cabin is the place where the passengers the other payloads uh, uh, the electronic equipments etc will be uh, kept okay their pressure is uh, 1.06 bar and uh, 25 degree celsius then we need to determine the pressure comma temperature at all the points of the cycle okay they also find the volume flow rate through the compressor inlet and the expander outlet for 100 tr okay so, so the capacity of this uh, uh, this uh, simple aircraft refrigeration system is 100 tr tr is the unit of refrigeration tons of refrigeration take cp value as 1.005 kilojoules per kilogram kelvin and r value as 0.287 kilojoules per kilogram kelvin and cp by cv we can take it as 1.4 okay so let us uh, try to uh, do this uh, problem so here the main task is to determine the pressure and the temperature at all points of the cycle so let us uh, uh, after reading the question uh, what you should do is first of all try to draw uh, the cyclic representation or the thermodynamic cycle of this uh, given question okay so let us uh, try to do that okay so uh, initially uh, it was given the aircraft is moving at a thousand kilo kilometer per hour so we can straight away uh, convert that kilometer per hour into meter per second because that will be more useful so it is thousand kilometer per hour is uh, nothing but around 277.7 meter per second okay now let us uh, try to do uh, try, try to draw the ts diagram of uh, this uh, uh, given question okay so we have already uh, studied how we can um, uh, draw the ts diagram uh, of a simple aircraft refrigeration system so uh, it is given in the question uh, that is uh, so uh, this ambient pressure and temperature are given so uh, it is uh, 0.35 bar and minus 10 degree celsius so we can straight away mark a point one like this okay so this line will be representing the constant pressure line representing the uh, pressure of the ambient or the atmospheric uh, pressure so that is nothing but 0.35 bar here so we can mark a point somewhere on this line as point one okay so now uh, the next task is to mark the point two so one to two is our uh, ramming process 
okay so recall uh, recall our analysis on uh, this uh, simple aircraft refrigeration system the first process is the aircraft coming and hitting the atmospheric air so the ramming of the atmospheric air so uh, let us uh, again look at the question is there anything mentioned about the ramming uh, action okay so by uh, glancing through the question we know that nothing is mentioned nothing nothing specifically is mentioned about the ramming process okay so there is no information regarding the ramming efficiency or anything anything any details such such like that so one to two process we can safely assume it as isentropic process okay so the easiest way to uh, represent a, a compression process that is ramming process itself is a compression process so we can safely assume it as a isentropy process and we can mark it like this a straight line in a, a straight vertical line in a ts diagram so one to two draw a, a vertical line from one towards two and mark a point sufficiently uh, visible uh, sufficient at a sufficient height we can mark it as point two okay so uh, uh, one to two process we here we are assuming it as isentropy process so we can straight away uh, apply the isentropic relation to that uh, line one to two so we can straight away li write like this p2 by p1 will be equal to t2 by t1 raised to gamma by gamma minus one this gamma value is nothing but the cp by cv ratio it is directly given in the uh, question okay so uh, we need to find out uh, p2 and t2 okay so p1 it is given that is the ambient pressure then t1 the ambient temperature is also given but what about p2 or t2 both the both this p2 and t2 are uh, unknowns it is not directly given in the question so we should try to find out this p2 or t2 in some other way okay so again if you remember we have derived a relation for that ramming process uh, uh, when we discussed our uh, simple aircraft refrigeration system that is in the previous uh, uh, lecture so and and there we have derived this this relation t2 by t1 will be equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 times m square where m is the mach number okay so now uh, let us uh, try to understand or now let us uh, try whether we can get some data from this uh, relation so first of all let us try to find out what is the mach number av available with this uh, available to this uh, aircraft aircraft so mach number is nothing but c by a where c is the uh, velocity of the aircraft where a is the local sonic velocity velocity of sound okay or it will be nothing but c by root of gamma r t okay so we can find out uh, the local sonic velocity or local velocity of the sound uh, through the space where the aircraft was traveling we can classify we can uh, find it out like this So a can be calculated like this: a root of gamma r t, where gamma 1.4, r value is given 287, uh, that is in joules per kilogram Kelvin, and t, the temperature of the uh, ambient was minus 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, so uh, at minus 10 plus 273, so the value will be, uh, so the value will be around uh, 325.07. Uh, meter per second okay so um, uh, so uh, what is what, what does that uh, what does that mean so the mach number we can uh, uh, find it like this uh, it will be coming as 277.7 divided by 325 uh, so it will be coming around 0.85 okay so straight away substitute this uh, t1 uh, sorry uh, t1 and uh, uh, m uh, here in this relation we can easily find out t2 so cross multiplying with the t uh, by t1 that is minus 10 degrees celsius we can substitute it as in kelvin so multiplying by cross multiplying we can calculate the value of uh, t2 as 301 kelvin so we can calculate the value of t2 as 301 kelvin now our immediate process is to substitute this value of uh, t2 here uh, then we can simply uh, by mathematical calculation we can calculate p2 here okay so the p2 value will be by cross multiplying uh, then we can calculate 0.35 times 
this uh, ratio it will be coming around 0.561 bar p2 uh, temperature uh, sorry pressure of the ambi ambient air after this ramming process it will be becoming 0.56 bar okay then now uh, we have reached uh, the point 2 uh, p1 and t2 sorry p1 and t1 we knew now we have calculated p2 and t2 now let us uh, try to move on now the uh, if you remember our analysis the next step after this ramming process is our main compressor work okay so 2 to 3 is our main compressor work so now let us try to represent that compressor work on our uh, ts diagram okay so let us uh, read the question uh, the pressure ratio of the compressor is given okay so the pressure ratio of the compressor is given that is 4.5 okay then uh, uh, anything else is mentioned about this compressor so let us read the question heat exchanger effectiveness is there okay we will come back to that then isentropic efficiency of compressor and expander are 0.8 each the isentropic efficiency of a compressor what does that mean what does that mean if so let us come back to our ts diagram so after point 2 the air air the uh, the um, uh, the atmospheric air is going to enter the main compressor actually uh, if the uh, um, compressor was compressor was working uh, in an ideal case it will be the 2 to 3 process will be isentropic uh, line or it, it, it will be an isentropic process but here it is mentioned that uh, it is having an isentropic efficiency of the compressor is given so what does that mean the if if the compressor uh, if the compressor was working purely in, in isentropic process the isentropic efficiency would have been 1 okay so uh, here the isentropic efficiency is not 1 but less than 1 so what does that mean the compressor is not working isentropically but uh, it will be some other adiabatic process so we can uh, draw uh, another uh, line representing the some actual process of the compressor which will not be isentropic but will be uh, some uh, ideal uh, so, so, sorry some other uh, adiabatic process but not reversible reversible adiabatic was isentropic process but uh, by considering some irreversibilities or uh, some actual uh, losses we are considering the irreversible adiabatic process as our compressor working and that we can represent it as 2 to 3 dash so what does that mean uh, this isentropic efficiency uh, of the compressor is given and also the pressure ratio of the compressor is given what does that mean p3 by p2 that is p2 was the pressure of the air admitted at the inlet of the compressor so it will be increasing that pressure to p3 and that ratio will be 4.5 so p3 by p2 will be 4.5 that is given in the uh, question so p3 by 0.561 will be equal to 4.5 so by, by by cross multiplying p3 or p3 dash will be 2.52 bar but what is this p3 is equal to p3 dash how how that came because uh, p3 and p3 dash all uh, both these points are 3 and 3 dash all these uh, these both these points are coming on the same pressure line okay so p3 and p3 dash will be same and that we have calculated calculated as for 2.52 bar okay so what is the um, so now we have uh, reached uh, now we have reached uh, the uh, p3 value okay now let us try to uh, find out t3 temperature at 3 now we have calculated the pressure at 3 okay so let us continue later